everyone requested to kindly switch off their video and audio please everyone please switch off their video and audio Every participants are requested to kindly switch off their audio and video. Okay. Mafizul Islam, please. Uh, Turn off your audio. Mafizul Islam, please turn off your audio. Except dignitaries and the guest and resource persons, all uh, other participants are requested to mute yourself and to make your video off. Please cooperate us. Sujon Bormon, Tomake Bola, Sujon Bormon, Apnake to screen presentation got the Nisha Parache, Jodi up to Bondo got the Napa and up in Leap Korea or Jan Guru, Sujon Bormon, please.
Professor Sunil Shom, actually our pronounced visit sir with us and also the resource persons, uh, uh, Dr. Patho Pratim Dash is with us and our uh, principal okay. sir with us. So please start, it is okay. 11, just 11, please start. Okay, sir. So shall we start, sir? <clears throat> Principal, sir, may, may we start? Principal, sir? Yes, yes, please. Okay, okay. Start, please. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. A very good morning to you, to all, uh, to all of you. A heavy, rainy good morning to everyone. Uh, our honorable dignitaries, resource person, dear colleagues, beloved students, and all dear participants from different parts of the state, as well as our country. Warm and hearty welcome to this online platform of Google Meet for one day national level webinar on National Digital Library of India, Transforming Education in India, organized by the PG departments of English and Geography of Kochbihar College, in collaboration with the National Digital Library of India, IIT Kharagpur. As we know, being digital, thinking digital, working digitally is the urge and need of present hour standing in a pandemic phase where classroom teaching, learning, use of library for self-learning has almost been stopped. But we are the learned and the educationist the most mandatory and requisite group of society could not resist us sharing our knowledge or compiling our knowledge, whether among students or among our ourselves, whatever the situation is. So to conquer the situation, we are now um, in a new empowering situation of ourselves by transforming our art of teaching and learning and knowledge sharing process from the orthodox offline to a new normal digital online process by using several platforms. In this present context, this kind of workshop helps us a lot to achieve our target smoothly. Kojbear College is continuously and repeatedly organizing such kind of wo workshop, looking into a new venture and a new era of digitization. So let us start our today's program with the inaugural and welcome speech of our honorable chairman of the workshop and principal of Kojbihar College, Dr. Pankaj Kumar Devnath, sir. Sir, over to you. And you are requested now to give your lecture. Thank you, Sonil. Good morning to one and all. So, today I'm 15th of September, we are going to organize one day national level webinar on National Digital Library of India, Transforming Education in India, which will be organized through this Google Meet platform. And this one day webinar is being organized by the Postgraduate Department of Geography and Postgraduate Department of English of Kujbihar College in association with National Digital Library of India, IIT Kharagpur. First of all, I would like to convey my sincere thanks and welcome Professor Dev Kumar Mukhopadhyay Honorable Vice Chancellor of Kujbihar Pancharan Burma University. He is the chief patron of our today's webinar and he has been constantly supporting us as a guardian and he, has, he is really acting as the uh, total uh, inspiration of our, uh, of our 
uh, on our activities so thank you sir for being with us again on this uh, online platform uh, i heartily welcome you sir uh, on this two days webinar we have with us at present uh, dr patrapotim das who is the only resource person of two days webinar he is the joint principal investigator national digital library of india iit kharagpur and professor department of computer science and engineering iit kharagpur on behalf of the members of the kujbihar college family i do heartily welcome you sir on this online platform of google meet though you are really sir busy in your activities really very busy uh, but still you have uh, given us time to deliver your this valuable speech your deliberation will definitely help not only the students but also the teaching community of not only of our college but also of other institutions who have attended uh, this two days webinar so definitely uh, your deliberation will highlight the importance of digital library and how this digital library will work and has been working also and how the students and the teaching community can get benefit and can how use this uh, platform uh, to have the benefit uh, of using library in this pandemic situation especially i think we all will be benefited sir from your valuable lecture i again welcome you sir on this particular platform and i also congratulate you to be with us uh, despite your busy schedule thank you sir again uh, from the core of art uh, of uh, of me and of the other uh, members of our kujbihar college Uh, within a very short time, uh, the Registrar of Kujibar Panjwan Borma University, Dr. Abdul Kader Safili, who will be joining with us, and he will also deliver his speech as the chief guest of this webinar. So, uh, I am uh, welcoming Dr. Uh, Abdul Kader Safili, and he is also constantly supporting us and uh, guiding us also in different. conducting different activities of our college so thank you sir uh, for being with us always i would like to convey my heartiest thanks and congratulations and welcome also all the participants of this today's webinar and nearly more than 700 participants have registered on this today's webinar and mostly 250 of them uh, can view these um, platform platform google meet and others will uh, use this uh, youtube platform so naturally this is a very big platform of more than 700 uh, participants you are all welcome and uh, definitely you will be uh, getting certain benefits from the valuable speech of our distinguished resource person dr parthopotim das again i am welcoming all of you all the participants the students and the teachers and the academician and the administration uh, administrators uh, who are uh, join, uh, who are here and have joined uh, to attend this webinar i would like to thank and congratulate Uh, and welcome also the members of the organizing committee the conveners dr tapan kumar das the coordinator department of uh, geography was pg department of geography kujbihar college and uh, professor tarikul islam assistant professor of uh, pg Depart uh, department of english kujbihar college the secretary Uh, Sri uh, Binoy Sharma, 
who is the librarian of our Kujbihar College, and also all the members of the organizing committee. I would also like to thank uh, our members of the governing body for their constant support and help, and also uh, I like to convey my sincere thank to our president of the governing body, Sri Mihir Goswami. He is always uh, guiding us, and he is also the source of inspiration of all the activities of our college. I also thank the other teacher members of our college and also the non-teaching staff of the Kujbihar College. Thank you again, all of you. And uh, I think, uh, I hope also that the student webinar will be a very successful one and will be a very fruitful one. Thank you. Thank you again, all of you. Over to Sonal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, speech and hope this workshop will always uh, will be a grand success like the earlier ones. Uh, and now I would request uh, Honorable Chief Patron and the Vice Chancellor of Kojbihar Panchanan Burma University to say a few words to us and uh, whose encouragement and um, uh, support has constantly encouraged us to organize such kind of workshops repeatedly. Sir? Thank you, Sonil. Thank you very much. Very good morning. Just I have come to know that Kojbihar and other surrounding areas now have been inundated with heavy rain. But sitting in Calcutta, I'm experiencing something different. Here it is too hot, and uh, I, I'm actually we have been suffering from hot weather. However, very good morning from here. Thank you very much for inviting me in this webinar. Thank you. So at the very outset, I express my sincere thanks to the principal, Kojbihar College, and also the Department of Geography, Papunda, who is taking initiative always and inviting me for all the programs you are taking there. Whenever I used to get marriage time, I, I generally like to join you for saying something. Though I do not belong to this discipline, and one expert already is there, who will be delivering lecture on this topic. I think his lecture and his deliberation will benefit all, will, will be many, his lecture will give him sufficient information to all the participant, teachers, scholars. So far, by I understand virtually this digital library it is an old concept. It was virtually discovered how 100 years ago. And after that, in 60s, it was developed. But ultimately, when internet facility is available, since then, digital library has become very much important. And all the countries, and all the specially developed countries, European countries, American countries, all the universities, they have developed so much in this digitization of their libraries. Ours are pro our problem is something different as because our institution, colleges, universities are located in the remote rural area of India. And here what happens, though institution is taking initiative to make their libraries digitized. But the problem is that the stakeholders, especially students and uh, our, our research scholars and also a section of teachers. They are not in a position to get all these benefits of this digitization as because I know, as because I'm always in contact with my students and I know in several parts of our locality where students do not get this facility due to poor internet access. Two things are there. Certainly expert is here and will be telling so many things, so many information he'll be giving. But one thing is that to me, as because I'm involved with this uh, activities since long, and first thing is that what I experienced from my first part of my administrative life, academic administrative experience, that when we digitized our library, then it was not connected with the internet, but the students used to come to the library and get facilities 
inside the inside sitting inside the libraries that is one type of digitization that is the digitization to some extent or to the limited extent where one student teacher or scholar sitting in the library he can get access to all the information which is situated which is which exists in the library itself but second part is that when it is connected with the web that is when it is connected through internet then this information is practically passing from one institution to another from one place to another from one country to another nowadays students teachers scholars sitting in one country for example sitting in kochbihar our students our teachers our scholars can get information from any good library in in united states of america and also european countries and getting access you know also few days back i was giving some information or delivering some inaugural lecture in some other webinar where i where i told that some some informations two types of information digital information are there one is free another is you have to pay for that for example there are so many libraries in the united states of america europe and there are so many good libraries where you can get access free of cost but for example gestor for example if you want to get information from american library for example you want to get information from british library you have to pay something you have to be member by giving your membership fees or for example gestor one educational institution has to be member of that very of that very organization and then only you can get information through this digitized mode so there are two parts however the most important thing is that we have to think whether our students will get benefit from these sources from the digitized sources and from for that reasons our students should get access they should have good internet facility they should have uh, modern electronic gadgets they should have computer facility they should have a uh, laptop facilities all the facilities this facility they should have after that only they will get this facility so our challenge is very much high and now i will conclude my lecture by just mentioning one thing that is under this pandemic situation when corona hits our civilization when corona hits our educational institution only then will we understand that what type of challenge we are facing students are not able to come to the library students have to sit one day just few days back when i was talking to my students he was telling that sir how can i prepare myself for the examination i am not in a, i am not in a position to go to the library this is the challenge that we are facing here and our duty our responsibility our co collective responsibility is to make our libraries digitized in such a manner so that our students our scholars and lastly our teachers should get access to the libraries so it is digitized mode and through internet facility that is the greatest challenge we are facing nowadays so it is the state it is the government it is the educational institution it is the university and all the colleges who will have to take the responsibility have to take the duty to make them aware to make them provide provide that to get that facility thank you very much thank you sonel thank you to your college for inviting me here again and again for saying a few words and giving me opportunity uh, to say something thank you over to sonal thank you very much thank you sir thank you professor dev kumar sir uh, for his uh, nice words and being a benefactor and supporter always for us and also uh, what he uh, he told that it's a true it's a challenge for us the, to being uh, being digitized what i have already told that being digitized is a challenge uh, uh, in front of us but uh, now let on let us move on to our uh, next pro uh, program so i would like to welcome our respected chief guest and the registrar of kochbihar panchanan barma university dr abdul kader safeli sir to say few words sir are you there please sir no please uh, sonel uh, proceed i think he is not uh, sir will join soon okay proceed okay 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 sir 
So as we know, the National Digital Library of India is a project under Ministry of Education of Government of India. And obje its objective is to collect and collate metadata and provide full text index from several national and international digital libraries, as well as other relevant sources. It is a digital repository which contains textbooks, articles, videos, audio books, lectures, simulations, fiction, and all other kinds of learning media. The NDLI provides free of cost access to many books in the Indian languages and also in English. So this is the actual background of organizing this workshop and keeping this in mind, our uh, most active and enthusiastic person who is the convener of the workshop and an eminent and renowned professor of Department of Geography of Kochbihar College has always been a pioneer to make us digitally empowered and has organized such nice workshop. So now I would request Dr. Tapan Kumar Dash, the convener of the program to address the spectators of the meeting. Thank you, Sonil. Respected Chairman and the Principal Sir of this college, Dr. Fonkus Kumar Devnath, the Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor of Kujbiya Panchan Burma University and Honorable Register Sir, my colleagues, and of course, Professor Partho Sharthi Dash, uh, Professor of Computer Science Department, IIT Kharagpur, and the learned participant, the beloved students, my colleagues. It is well known to everybody that our college has already introduced the master degree course in geography, that is MSc in geography and English, that is MA in English, and we have started online, online classes, but we pointed out some lacunas. So we are also planning to introduce a world-class learning content management system module, module from the coming month, October 2020. That's why we are designing our e-contents in the four quadrant model as per UGC guideline, so that our students, especially the PG students of geography and English can learn step by step easily and smoothly from their home in spite of prevailing network issues. But I personally, personally feel the acute need of such program when our students as well as professors finds no library books readily because the library are closed. And they are inclining more and more towards learning content management system, digital libraries, open access resources and learning object repositories. So it is really an excellent opportunity that we will now hear the live lecture of Professor uh, Dash, who is a pioneer personality in, the, in this field and this program is being collaborated by National Digital Library itself. Definitely, it will help us to cope us the lacks of hard copy books as our college libraries are closed in these pandemic situations. Not only that, this challenge of pandemic opens an opportunity to explore the beauty of online searching and happiness of fulfilling our demand of not only in terms of study materials, books, journals, but also the audios, videos, cinemas, and lots of things for entertainment. Finally, I would say, as India fights COVID, the National Digital Library of India steps up to enable every learner of our country. It is our journey to provide an open access national resource that is available to anyone, anywhere in the country to learn, share, and remove the crisis and transform education in India. And I am very much pleased to inform you that more than 700 participants had registered in this webinar and we have already supplied them the YouTube link and we are limited to accommodate only 
250 uh, uh, 50 participants in this platform, but all are requested to uh, to see the YouTube video, live video. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Over to Sonil. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tapan Kumar Dash. And uh, now let us move on to our awaited technical session. And this time also, again, I would take the opportunity and uh, introduce such a renowned and respected person whose name is enough as his introduction. Though it's a formality, but I do have to introduce him. Dr. Parthapratim Dash is the joint principal investigator of National Digital Library of India project of MHRD and leads the initiative to integrate the re digital repositories of various institutions, agencies, and publishers across the India. He is a professor of Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Kharagpur, and also heads the Rajendra Mishra School of Engineering Entrepreneurship. Dr. Das received his BTech, MTech, and PhD degrees in the years 1984, 1985, and 1988, respectively, from IIT Kharagpur. He served as a faculty of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Kharagpur, from 1988 to 1998. In 1998, he moved to the industry and served in senior management director positions till 2011. His current interests uh, include computer analysis of Indian classical dance, technology, enhanced education, and software engineering. Most welcome to our eminent resource person, Dr. Partho Pratim Dash, and uh, we are awaiting for your next lecture. Please, sir, please join with us. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, am you. I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Sonal. I'm I'm really overwhelmed by the uh, response that uh, Kujbihar College has shown. I'm really overwhelmed by the very warm words that uh, Professor Dev Kumar Mukhopadhyay, uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, shared with us his vision of uh, digital library. Actually, I'm feeling a little nervous because. Uh, kind of, I must admit that uh, some of the shortcomings that uh, mm. uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay mentioned about digital libraries are still not solved. They still continue to plague us, but we are trying to do our best. Uh, thanks to uh, Principal uh, Professor Pankaj Kumar Devnath for uh, uh, inviting me here, Dr. Professor Tapun Kumar Dash, who has been coordinating other coordinators and so on. So, uh, let me uh, uh, move on to uh, the actual, I think, uh, uh, do I have the permission to present, uh, madam? Yes, sir. Some, yes, someone... sir. Please, the session is yours now, sir. Show no, of Ghosh, please stop someone presenting. Else, someone else show of Ghosh, so please, please stop presenting. Show of Ghosh. If you do not, uh, if you uh, could not uh, uh, stop your presentation, please leave and uh, join again. Shourav Ghosh. Oh, oh. Shourav Ghosh. Okay, sir, you start, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, start. Yeah. Uh, is it visible? Uh, yes, sir. Please, is, is it visible? Okay. Yes, sir. It is visible. Uh, yeah. Okay. And and we all know the state of uh, you know instability of connection. So if I'm lo if I get lost, uh, Professor Das, please uh, call my number and let me know. Right. Mm, because at times you can't even make out that you are lost. Okay, uh, so thank you all very much again. And uh, I'm told uh, that there's a 
possibly a formidable number of uh, participants to this event, uh, running into several hundreds. So welcome you all, uh, students, teachers, academicians, uh, uh, staff, librarians, whoever is connected to this in whatever way. So National uh, Digital Library of India has its role cut out for transforming education in India. And it's really very appropriate uh, to be able to talk about it uh, uh, in terms of uh, our learning together in, in, on this platform. So uh, just to give a little background uh, on this, uh, certainly a, in today's time, uh, any nation needs uh, lifelong education and knowledge for anyone, anytime, anywhere. This is not something which was triggered by COVID, but this has been a requirement for long. And uh, while we uh, looked at uh, this project, we uh, just started discussing this project with the ministry. At that time, it was MHRD, of course. In 2014, uh, it was the end. And uh, certainly, the question was, uh, how can, at the time of demographic dividend of the country, where so many of young workforce is coming into play. How can we get them properly skilled, educated, and through anytime, anywhere learning? That's that's the you know I, I should say the basic driving force behind uh, uh, getting on here. And certain specifics we looked at, which I would like to share a little bit uh, for your understanding, because nothing much has changed uh, in the last uh, I mean since since then is uh, in around 2014, uh, FIKI and MHRD did a survey to find out in higher education as to what would it take to be able to provide higher education for all to all those Indians who are eligible for higher education. So that's a, that's a, uh, that's a pretty much a, a, a very uh, legitimate uh, aspiration of a country that we would want our citizens, uh, particularly on the verge of demographic development, to be uh, educated uh, in, in uh, come go to institutions and get uh, the education. Now, if you if you compute on in terms of the volume of students that need to go to higher education and do a, a small computation, you find that if you take a span of twenty years, twenty years is typically the times a child takes to come to the level where higher education is required. In the span of twenty years, if this needs to be done then we need to set up 270 colleges and six universities every month of these 20 years. 20 years is 240 months. And for every month, we need to set up six universities and 270 colleges to be able to provide education to all who need higher education for uh, kind of uh, being able to you know, support the economy in the demographic dividend. Certainly, this is not something, this is not, uh, not no possibility. It is, a, it is a theoretical impossibility to provide that. And that actually brings uh, us to the reliance or, on digital technology, the technology, the enhanced learning and all digital technology-based approaches. Now, COVID certainly has, uh, you know, kind of uh, tilted things uh, somewhat extremely in, in the favor of uh, digital. Uh, Sonal was uh, very prolific in, in talking about, um, uh, in, in telling us that we are getting, breaking away from the orthodox and kind of getting into I do not know what, but then digital is the way to go. So that brings in the context of the digital library and two major motives that uh, we decided to drive us on. One was open, that everything has to be open. It's not only Professor Mukhopadhyay talked about uh, open content open access, not only limited to that, it has to be open access in all possible kind, as far as possible. Open and free is, is what we are looking at. Uh, and it is open to the extent of, uh, you know, using open software, using, uh, you know, open infrastructure, so that there is, uh, the library belongs to everyone. The other one, uh, aspect that uh, certainly was, uh, has been our motto is to be inclusive. India is a, country of diversity we know so inclusiveness is a very basic necessity of our learning environment our educational environment 
we need to be inclusive in terms of languages. We have 22 official languages uh, where education is given. We need to be inclusive in terms of levels of education, geographical diversity, disciplines, and so on in every possible way. So with those uh, uh, kind of vision in the background, uh, we started off with the National Digital Library of India, kind of uh, targeting towards a digital ecosystem for education, which would look somewhat like this. Uh, thanks to the uh, consistent support of the ministry and also partly recently to the uh, pandemic of COVID, this ecosystem is getting matured very fast. So on one part of this is uh, the knowledge repository, which is the National Digital Library of India that we have been building, which is available on internet and mobile, free access to about uh, 3.5 crore learning contents to everyone, anybody, anywhere. Uh, but just having content does not get someone educated. So you need the delivery of the content, you need the teaching to be done. And that is where a whole bunch of uh, online programs through Swayam, through Swayam Prabha are coming in. There are, uh, it has matured into periodically executed, uh, you know, twice at least uh, semester type of courses are conducted where Students can attend over video, do assignments, take physical examination and get uh, certificates, grades, and finally the lower piece, which is kind of stitching all this together in terms of a virtual educational environment, open university, virtual university, and so on, where you do a course in online, get a credit, and you can actually take it to your transcript. I mean, your college may not have been able to provide the, the, that particular course, the teacher may not have been there. Not all colleges, all universities can teach all programs, but with this openness, uh, you know, digital learning, digital learning becomes reality and education become all pervasive. And that vision is getting, is being behind the major focus of National Digital Library of India. And as you all must have been pretty aware, that recently, when the name of the ministry changed to Ministry of Education, we actually have launched the National Educational Policy. And if you look into that policy, it's an open document of the ministry. I'll, advise, I'll request everyone, I mean, student, teacher, everyone, to have a look at the policy to know the directions in which our education is going to go. And if you look at that, you'll see the severe dependence on the digital technology and digital learning that the policy is very rightly professing. And that is where National Digital Library has been playing a role for the last five years and is envisioned to play a very strong role in the coming decades. So with that uh, background, uh, uh, let me come very specifically to a digital library. We have a uh, hard professor Mukhopadhyay who was uh, certainly uh, focusing very strongly on the digitization process and so on. Of course, those are required. Uh, the fortunate part of uh, some of these is, uh, well, when it is true that uh, uh, being able to digitize is significantly uh, also a question of resources that uh, the West has in more plenty than we do. Uh, we are always resource crunched, but at the same time, the advantage of digital is that uh, the digital is actually often much cheaper. So the way that things are going is not often that you need to uh, have physical documents and then digitize them. But uh, the question is, can you actually do the whole publication in digital, in which case it is, it is a cost saver for everybody. And then uh, it can be distributed in a much, uh, you know, more cost effective manner, much more ineffective manner. So digital library slowly is looking into all of those aspects, not only contents that are digitized from the physical form. So we say that there are, uh, there are contents which are uh, kind of uh, digitized from physical, but there is a severe amount of content which are born digital. And that's what is going to dominate the digital library space. But at the, at the core of it, a digital library is a 24 by 7 enabled infrastructure. It is uh, to cover all academic level from, you know, uh, from the very basic, you know, pre-nursery onto school level, college, 
post graduation uh, doctoral lifelong learning everything it must cover all disciplines multiple languages is important for us all domains of economy must be touched upon the user interfaces must be provided in multiple languages for ease of understanding and use of the library local language use there should be specific user interface for differently abled users and so on and so forth so there's a whole lot of objective that the digital library has and uh, uh, many of these objectives are generic as professor mukhopadhyay was rightly pointing out what's happened in um, us and europe for a long time but at the same time i must admit that uh, what's happening in india today is also unparalleled in the world india is leading in several ways because uh, if india if us speaks two languages english and spanish we speak 22 languages only officially uh, take offline we are so or uh, while uh, any any uh, uh, even the world digital library uh, driven by us uh, has uh, several language interfaces national digital library of india has already 10 language interfaces and we are moving towards 20 language interfaces uh india has a dubious uh, distinction of being the large having the largest population of visually impaired uh, uh, citizens so it's a big challenge for us in the digital library as well to provide user interfaces for the differently able so that's kind of is, is a vision that's kind of what uh, national digital library should take up the second aspect that i would like to mention and that is when again i will borrow from the inspiration of uh, professor mukhopadhyay is you know uh, how much of digitization we are talking about are we talking about digitization in the sense of having books in the pdf form which are digital forms of books are we talking about uh, articles in uh, pdf form newspaper in pdf form yes we are talking about all of that but we are talking lot more beyond that because the moment you take it to the digital space you can bring in multimedia in the whole effect that is it is not limited to being text it is everything can be digitized now so you can have video lectures by professors you can have uh, audio presentations you have audio books you have tutorials you have lecture slides you have different kinds of uh, virtual experiments uh, simulations you know the opportunities the the diversity of the type of content you can present in digital the type of experience that you can give to the user in digital is enormously rich and wide and that's what some of the glimpses you can see in the range of contents that we have at present national digital library of india has 70 plus different types of digital content between it including including content which are actually you know uh, active like you can you, you can have active test you know you can test your proficiency so you have a content which is interactive with you which helps you really directly learn some of the uh, some of the very specific uh, special uh, things that are emerging in terms of the digital library space and uh, national digital library of india is taking a leadership uh, not only in india but uh, across the world is uh, uh, several of you would know that uh, data is becoming core to doing research and that's not limited to doing research in artificial intelligence or computer science or engineering data is important everywhere i mean this uh, one of the organizers of this uh, webinar i understand is english department and uh, it is amazing that in the name of digital humanities the amount of data driven research that uh, different language departments are taking up geography needless to say is driven have been driven by data for ages the fact that uh, in in uh, recent times it does rain when the forecast is there of a rain earlier in our when we were kids we used to say if uh, alipur met office say that it will rain then you can rest assured that it is going to be a sunny day uh, that was also difficult to predict but now if it if it says that it rain it will rain at 4 o'clock it rains at 4 o'clock so how do you do that we have done that by collating years and years of millions of data and making models and that data centric research that data science which uh, and geography is significantly relying on are some of the you know pillars of uh, today's library 
I mean, you need these data sets. Unless data sets, you can't do research. You can't be effective to the work. You can't just do theory and, you know, you know, sit down and do theory, maths, and then do experiments to prove that. I mean, there are several ways. The theory is so complex that uh, it will probably take another 200 years to understand that theory. But by using the data by example, we may be able to derive a lot of facts uh, that were otherwise not possible. My whole intention of uh, spending time on talking on this is to give you a sense that it does um, make a, I mean, range of contents does make a lot of impact in terms of how the digital libraries work. So this is uh, where I am, uh, the National Digital Library of India. These are the basic facts uh, about, we have about five crore content. And uh, of that, about 3.5 crore, about 70% is open and free, which means that they are not only, uh, you know, paid references as uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay was afraid of. Yes, 1.5 crore is, are, are paid from the publisher. So you'll have to pay the publisher if you have the access. But 70%, 3.5 crore, 35 million, that's not a small number. Our contents which are contributed uh, open and free by several institutions, by several uh, publishers, by ministry department, by uh, open uh, collections, uh, OER, open educational resources, and so on. They are in about 300 plus languages, uh, comes from about 270 uh, sources. And as of now, we have 30 lakh registered users, though there are several unregistered open users as well. So I will not go through this uh, again. I mean, I already talked about uh, the objectives of a digital library. So NDL tries to meet all of that. It's a single window search and browse uh, mechanism for uh, finding out information that a learner needs, uh, covers all academic levels, uh, focusing on different domains for specific services in school, career development, law, medical, and so on, all types of different contents. And actually, it does all of that. I mean, it's just not technology that uh, makes NDLI. Technology is just a part of it. What makes NDLI is a huge national and international collaboration. What, I mean, uh, working from IIT Kharagpur, being supported by Ministry of Education, we are certainly the implementer, we are the maintaining uh, agency, the designer of NDLI, but NDLI really is a huge collaboration of several uh, institutions. As I mentioned, it's more than 200, 300 institutions who have put their hands together, who contribute, who allow their contents to be used by NDLI, uh, to be brought to the different users, so that users can actually get them. The contents do not belong to India. They are all borrowed from partners, different uh, universities, institutions. Uh, even uh, I would uh, I would request if uh, Coach Bihar College would want to contribute content, they are free to do that. And, uh, often people ask that, what can we contribute? I mean, well, you can contribute uh, things which you create. You are teaching every day. So there could be lecture notes uh, which you can uh, contribute. There could be question papers, there could be solutions, tutorials, assignments, there's so many things that can be contributed. It's not contribution in digital library does not necessarily mean books and published papers alone. I mean, they are important, but learning is a whole lot of bunch of things which everybody can contribute to are in the business. Now, before I uh, go on to, I mean, uh, go on in, in, the, in the further uh, specifics of this, uh, let me talk about some of the unique features of this uh, library, National Digital Library of India. The first that I would uh, like to mention is a, is a single window multilingual search and access, which means that you can find out information from, from a single window search. So there are some 200, 300 different uh, sources from where the content is coming. You don't have to go to that specific each and every source to find out the content. You, you search, browse in NDL, and you'll be able to find now, when I say this, naturally, the first reaction, uh, at least mentally, of many of the audience would be, much of the audience would be, and some of them would be vocal, is, well, that's what Google does. So what is the difference between NDLI and Google? It's, it's Google does, and Google has been doing it for ages. Google does it so well. I mean, I agree. All of us. Like, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I graduated, uh, I don't know, 
most, most of the audience, I'm sure, were not born in the parents are not married at that time. So uh, from that time, whatever the, I, I teach computer science at uh, the state of the art level in the in the world. So what did I learn from? Certainly, I did not uh, learn them while I did my degree. I had to learn them later on. Every day, I have to learn new things in my discipline. Every one of us have to. Who is teaching, who is studying. So we learn from Google. That's true. But there is a difference. The difference is it takes quite a lot to find information from Google. You need to be really skilled to find information from Google. Let me take an example. Let us consider there are two students who need learning input. One is a, let's say, a girl at eighth standard, and another is a boy in the doctoral studies. So the both of them, both of them need information uh, on magnetism. Both of them are interested about magnetism. The, the girl in the eighth standard needs to know about magnetism, which means that she needs to know about, you know, what is, uh, the, what is the meaning of magnetism, what is a bar magnet, the fact that bar, there are two poles, north and south, the fact that, you know, similar poles repel and, and so on, the fact that if you put a bar magnet, put a paper and, you know, sprinkle some iron dust, it will take certain patterns, flux patterns. So those are kind of things that, that basic understanding of magnetism experiments is what the eight standard student, the girl is trying to find information. In contrast, the doctoral student, the boy, also wants uh, information on magnetism because his interest is to do research in magnetism. So what uh, the boy is looking for is, well, magnetism is nothing but a, a specific manifestation of a generalized field theory. He's looking for what has been the recent, uh, most recent Nobel Prize relating to this, what are the recent publications in Nature, uh, Physics Review, later these kind of journals, and what is the latest view in terms of the unification of gravitational and magnetic field theories and so on. Both of them are in magnetism. But meaning-wise, desire-wise, vision-wise, they're asking for completely different sets of information. Now, they both go to Google and type magnetism. You, you can try, you can just uh, go and try you get lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of pages. Now the question is, who has seen the on magnetism, not the boy, who is looking for doctoral level content on magnetism? None of them will get that in the first few pages. So Google is great to find the information for a very, very I mean, practically infinite universal resource, but it's very inspecific. It does not care about who the user is, what the user needs. So you need to, so how do you solve the problem? How do we solve the problem, all of us do? Is we try to, I would not say magnetism, I'll say magnetism for a standard. I'll say magnetism, uh, experiments with magnet, bar magnets at an elementary level. So you have to innovate queries so that you get a specific answer. And that's where the sophistication of use come in. And that's where Google does not remain very effective as a, as a tool to find learning content for students in general, learners in general. Now, what if we could customize the response to magnetism for these two students separately? That is, if the eighth standard student asks, then she will get more of the eighth standard answers. And if the doctoral student asks, he will get more of the research. Can this be done? Question is, how do you do that? Of course, uh, one uh, thought would be that, well, we'll put all details about the user that uh, she studies in this. She's uh, been doing uh, well in uh, physical sciences. Uh, she has specific interest in, uh, in physics. Uh, she has been uh, uh, consistently looking for information on different uh, type forms of energy and so on. You can put all that information for the girl, put a whole lot of similar information for the boy and can try to see, okay, what does match best between the, the background of the girl or the boy and what we are finding? Well, I mean, sounds good, practically impossible. Uh, first of all, uh, 
Could we have uh, the Could we audience have... muted? Okay, thank you. Uh, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, okay, sir, please continue. Yeah, please okay, continue. sir, please continue. I, I, actually, 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 as an organizer, you can mute everybody. I mean, don't leave it to the users. Okay, I, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. So, now uh, what happens is uh, why. Why you cannot do such things as as uh, putting the entire biodata of the user? I mean, first of all, it's it's impractical to do in a large scale. Second is there are a lot of privacy privacy issues. I mean, we are we are so uncomfortable talking about any specifics uh, on general sites and, and very legitimately. And also, often you, I do not really know what I know. That's a big question. I mean, do I really know what I know? To be able to say that this is what I mean, that's a big question, and that's a may sound like a philosophical question, but that's a very genuine question. And that is precisely where, in 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 uh, traditional in uh, Sonel's orthodox system, we will need a teacher to be there, a teacher who figures out what you need. Now, how do you make a similar model in terms of uh, a digital library? And that's what makes a single window search effective is you borrow on something which uh, e-commerce has been doing for ages. I'm sure all of you use some one or more or several of e-commerce sites for regular purchases, or at least uh, for exploring what can be purchased. And if you are consistently using a site for a few times, four or five times purchasing at times, and then maybe just surfing and finding out information about products at different times, you'll find a lot of recommendations are being made to you. And if you observe those recommendations over a time carefully, you'll find that they are not irrelevant to your lifestyle. You may not be looking for those at that point of time, but uh, they are relevant. You use them or you use a variant of them. So that is kind of the, the model. I mean, just to explain you, that is the model that you do. What So the, how do the e-commerce site know? You haven't told them. They know because they do not look at who you are. It doesn't matter. What they look at is what you do. And you go to their site, you look at different products, you make different uh, you know, uh, purchases, or you spend a lot of time reading about a certain product and so on, and they make an understanding of what you need. That exactly is a similar thing that uh, we are trying to do in terms of the digital library context where you track what the user is reading on what videos does the user spend more time? What are the type of content that the user would just uh, look at? Or what are the content that they will download and use? What are the content they will print and so on? And gives you more and more of idea of what the user needs. And you make your model accordingly and tune your search according to this. So that's kind of philosophically what is the difference between Google and uh, National Digital Library of uh, India. So I made uh, this explanation a little bit elaborate, uh, particularly for my young friends, because uh, they are so much on the on the on the digital. They're so much on the social media that they need to understand how does these things work, and how can that be put to effective use for their purposes. Several of the other uniquenesses uh, are uh, quite evident. We have talked about spectrum of learners. Uh, we have talked about languages. We have talked about language interfaces. Uh, personalization is what I was talking of, uh, this story of the boy and the girl in magnetism, and so on. Uh, we have about uh, 15,000 institutions who are participating. I mean, there are users from 15,000 institutions. I'm not sure if Coach Bihar College is a participating institution. If you are not, uh, sir, Professor uh, Das and others, particularly Professor Devnath, the principal, sir, I request that uh, please be in touch with us and get all your students and uh, faculty registered as users in the NGLI. It is free for everybody and it's a huge, huge benefit that everybody can earn. Uh, on the average, uh, there are about uh, 100,000, 1 lakh hits uh, to, the, to this library. 
and uh, a number of contents and all we talked about. And of course, as things uh, move on, as we keep uh, rolling, we gather some more. So we got two awards on the way in the last couple of years as well. So this is how the NDLI uh, uh, look like. Left is the view on the internet, on the portal, uh, which is uh, what you get to see. And you will, you will see particularly, I'll draw your attention to three layers that we have here. Study at home, COVID research repository, and teach at the lecture. And what you see on right is the library on the, on the mobile app. It is available on Android as well as iOS. Uh, of course, uh, Android usage is much higher. You can just go to Google Store or App Store and uh, you know look for National Digital Library, download and keep. Or, or you can you can use it on the internet. That's what most people do. And uh, you don't need to remember the URL. You can just go to Google for this and type National Digital Library of India. This comes on the top. Okay. So now what you see here are. Uh, are, are some of the structures that I'll talk more about as we as I go along. Study at home and COVID repository, which I'm I'm I'm, I'm almost done with the general you know, background and philosophy of the National Digital Library of India and what you have. And I'll I'll slowly get more specific about what's been happening in terms of COVID. How did uh, so Professor Mukhopadhyay I mean, did did uh, mention about the, I mean how how can digital library really help? You know, strengthen the whole learning environment in the context of COVID. So I'll talk more specifically on that uh, after a while. Uh, let me just complete the general stuff. So this is uh, so this is just a sample set of screens showing you the interface in multiple different languages. You change the language, everything in that uh, screen changes. Uh, metadata. Metadata is is part of the mechanism uh, through which it works. Uh, metadata is data about data. That is every content that we have. As I said, the contents are contributed by several others. And how do we find it out? So every content is described in terms of a set of fields, set of <clears throat> like author, keyword, uh, subject, uh, publisher, year of publication, etc. And there are more interesting fields also, like uh, the educational level. Is this content meant for eighth standard? Is it meant for uh, postdoctoral? Is it meant for doctoral research, and so on? So you talk about educational level, you can very well figure out that once we put this metadata, it becomes much easier to talk about, uh, uh, you know, that uh, girl and the boy who needed to know about magnetism at eighth standard or magnetism at the doctoral level. Uh, then there's metadata in terms of uh, you know, learning difficulty, learning time, how much time does it take to learn this and so on. So all these descriptors, I, I mean, there's a, there's a completely separate, very detailed discussion on on what this metadata design is, which is also very unique for uh, National Digital Library of India, which is well appreciated. And how do you actually create the metadata for all these different types of contents and so on? But that kind of a discussion is primarily focused, it's primarily meant for the library science uh, students and faculty and librarians, professionals. So I'll skip that part. I'll, I'll keep it focused in terms of the actual learning experience that the user can. Uh, so this is a kind of a profile of the uh, free content. I, I, I knew that uh, there is always the interest is in terms of the free content. So 3.5 crore free content has about 61 lakh books, about 1.77 crore articles, journals, thesis, video lecture, audio lecture. You, you name it, it is there almost. Okay. Now let us uh, let me uh, come specifically more towards uh, you know what happened when COVID struck. So, so you, can, you can see, let me just uh, in the bigger view, explain what these uh, layers mean. So there is one layer of cards at the top in the National Digital Library. Uh, as the name suggests, this was this uh, kind of a presentation was created. The contents existed, the present, everything was there, but this kind of uh, presentation was created when COVID struck. Because when COVID struck in May, in March, Suddenly, institutions stopped, and people needed something to learn. And uh, so that's why this is called study at home. Uh, we did not think at that time that we will need to continue this for so long. We thought, okay, it's a month or two. But it seems like this is going to be probably a perpetual feature. 
So in this, there are different uh, cards, which if you go in, we find specifics of learning content at that level. So there is school, there is content for engineering, there is content for uh, science, there is uh, specific for CBSC examination preparation. So this was a time, I mean, just uh, think about it, we're in March, and uh, CBSC was uh, sometime in June. So it was really a big question of uh, how do these both uh, candidates prepare themselves? They're not being able to go to school, they're not being able to go to coaching and all. So we collected a huge amount of huge volume of uh, content from, I mean, this was done within a month, less than a month, couple of weeks, we collected huge amount of free content from variety of sources, uh, government projects, Kendriya Vidyalai uh, sites, uh, different uh, private educational sources, which are giving things free and so on. So this study at home bar is primarily about studying on different uh, areas of discipline for the students. Like we'll have humanities, we'll have literature, we'll have law and management and so on. So just to uh, uh, tell you a little bit more. So this is how, for example, the study at home, the school part is left most. It's very small here. You're not being able to see, but it's actually school. School part says, so, so just uh, expanding on, there are separate different video lectures. There is a uh, lot for the JE preparation. JE finally happened, you know, in, in the last week, but then uh, it has been around that JE will have to happen. And so there are lots and lots of preparatory material for this, all open and free. Solutions to questions and uh, answers of uh, last five years of main examination and 12 years of advanced, JE advanced examination. These are all, I mean, these are not uh, just collated from anywhere. These are actually solved by uh, several students who have passed uh, JE in the last couple of years, moderated, curated by several expert professors, uh, subject matter experts, and presented in a very nice way. So you can say, this is, this is what we call NDLI tutor on IIT JE main. There's an NDLI tutor on IIT JE advanced, which people can use uh, very, uh, I mean, these, are, these are meant for the school. So you can get, see on the right hand side, a very structured uh, hierarchical way of getting to the question. And then on a particular question, you can see what are the question, the answer keys, which are obviously any, any solution uh, team will give that. But what is uh, important are a couple of things. One is uh, the, the way it is solved, which is often very smart. And also the insight of, uh, for example, if there are four options, then often you don't actually need to consider, I mean, need to do the solution to decide what is the correct option. Many a times, you may just look at the options and do some quick analysis to uh, say that, well, these two options can never happen. They're too obviously wrong. And that's typically what happens in MCQ. So we give, give some insights into that, to those kind of approaches so that you can, think, you can do things better in a faster way and you know, can, uh, a set of similar problems, uh, reference material, and so on. So all of these uh, are available to the school students, uh, different video lectures. Exam here is a very beautiful collection of video lectures. Short videos just tell you, explains you the apparently difficult concepts in a very lucid uh, manner. Then there are activity oriented learning, things that you can do while you are at home or in school, you know, kind of uh, how to make a pyramid out of uh, paper and scale and uh, then actually how to, uh, you know, measure what its uh, volume going to be, and just make sure that you learn your uh, formula of volume of pyramid by hands-on experience, project-based learning. Very good. Uh, then uh, study of uh, at home has a lot for the college students of different uh, disciplines, engineering uh, a lot, and tell lectures, which are engineering lectures of poem, about hundred thousand, nearly hundred thousand such lectures are available. Uh, in a very organized manner, depending on what area you want to learn. Now, so there are several, I mean, you just, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I could not uh, specifically make uh, you know, uh, certain samples, show you certain sample collections on geography or English. And of course, I'm sure that hundreds of students uh, attending, they must not all be from these two departments, only there be students from all departments. So I just would encourage that you go to those uh, you know, study at home uh, uh, tabs here, 
that as you, as you can see on this uh, orange tabs here and go to your broad area and uh, look for specifics and no matter which subject you are from you'll find a lot of learning opportunities there i'll move on to the second uh, layer here in the middle which is covid uh, research repository which is a very very interesting idea that we promote that we have been promoting we i mean you know, when covid started uh, taking over i mean soon it was clear that it's not something like a uh, you know ebola or bird flu or dengue which will come happen somewhere and go away it's going to change the life it's not it's not about the virus and the vaccine and the cure but it's a change in the style in the way we live way we survive the way the economy runs so covid has impacted every field of life whether it is transportation whether it is healthcare whether it is banking whether it is education without covid we would not be doing this webinar plain and simple but it is so effective so easy to do so many people benefiting from the discussion we could have done it but in in earlier times i know what would have happened um, uh uh coach we had college would have approached us that why not uh, have a uh you know seminar done there then we'll say okay going to coach bihar coming back it's a two hour seminar it will take us three days to do let's see when we can find all all of these and then finally in the auditorium 150 students can come but now if some couple of hundred are attending we are talking i i did not have to move anywhere so these are there are a lot of effectiveness that is also coming in and covid is not only negative but it's also telling us you know to do things differently i'll i'll end this presentation with some you know analysis of what how covid has actually changed is changing our thought process but what i meant in this covid research resource repository is there is a severe need to do research in every discipline every area because of covid impact i mean no matter whether it's english it's geography it's uh um, banking or it is transportation everywhere there is an impact and there needs to be and when you do this research what is that you need the traditional view of digital library with this scholarly publication is what others have done and that's what he says is a is a resource library of course it is of course but in to today's time in a time where the research has to be output driven output oriented it is not enough to just have scholarly pub not the books you need a 360 degree research resource that is besides scholarly publications you need to know what the data sets are again no matter which discipline you are in we got impacted so you need to have the data on which people have worked you need to have the data in your area in your specialization in your related areas and so on so data several hundreds and hundreds of data sets annotated in several different ways are being opened up for you then you need documents and videos that are being published from very authentic sources i'm not talking about general television reports or you know media chats i'm talking about uh, reports coming from nih from icmr and so on so all that you need now if you are a researcher if you are doing all this you are doing a research your next subsequent question is what do i publish so you need information on what are the journals that are coming out on covid what are the special issues covid is Uh, journals are doing um, going on to to propagate this in covid impacted research areas what are the specific conferences on this where all the ideas are being challenged where all funding are being uh, opened what is the startup opportunity so on so 360 degree of research is what you need to know on and that's a role that the digital library can very effectively play going well beyond the issues which are just limited to digitization it's a service digital library is a service of learning is a way of learning is a way of research is a way of going forward and that's what we have been trying to do we launched this sometime in in uh, april this has been highly appreciated uh, by by different uh, research communities in india and has been doing we have been uh, you know enhancing it on a, on a regular basis so just go and have a look the third uh, row that you saw of the cards uh, here I'll, i'll go back to the view the third row you saw are the featured collections which are which are a whole lot of other things i mean this is not only about uh, going to school and college or doing research on on covid or 
there are there are a lot of users of general interest so we have certain featured areas like we have a centenary card where very you know appropriately shotojit rai is uh, featured for this year and we are very proud to say that uh, shotojit rai uh, did 39 films and this 39 for the 39 films he made uh, the film scripts which are uh, kind of uh, called the red book or the kheror khata very very elegantly brilliantly done in a non conventional way and national digital library of india is the only collection where these are available in the digitized form kartsi uh, the permission from uh, his son mr shundeep rai has allowed us to do that so and there are several others like there are uh, you know uh, stories from agdojon goppo uh, or ebaro baro which you will learn was originally published in english maybe 15 years before it came in bangla it was published in amrita bazar patrika something which is not published in this country for a long so yes all the issues of uh, amrita bazar patrika related to shotu ji that where he used to write stories in english so very interesting things on this day person of the day different kind of uh, things which will uh, if you are generally interested reader you will benefit so that's uh, that's kind of what uh, the what the you know uh, what the national digital library is overall about and what uh, the way we have structured it in terms of learning uh, i'll take another 5 6 uh, uh, minutes to talk specifically about uh, you know trans transformational education in the context of covid just to take a view on the tone that uh, professor mukhopadhyay said that it is true that uh, it has been ages when digital library actually start so uh this is where i i i try to look at how does uh, things uh, change in life in the context this is specifically in the context of digital library so i've taken two parameters for this analysis study I mean, you may disagree with this analysis completely. This is not taken from anyone. This is purely my personal view, but that's what I have experienced. So I said that uh, there are two parameters which decide how you, how we do our systems. One is the parameter of planning. You know, we do a lot of planning to do things. But in HRD, Ministry of Education, now a lot of plan goes on and things like that. And the other is. the aspect of disruption because if you are making some change if you are make doing plans to make some changes which will make your things better then naturally in terms of doing that you have to disrupt what is presently there so there is always a question of how much you disrupt and how much you plan so what is the most conservative uh, way you would do things and that is what you do is we would like to plan a lot so okay not planning is not good so you should plan you should think about what will happen if that fails what will happen if that eventuality goes wrong and we will do a whole lot of plan and what will you plan for you will plan for list disruption you will plan for list disruption you do not want to change you do not want to get impacted in a in an adverse you want things to improve but you you also want the comfort of things remaining as they were so disruption we don't do so high planning and low disruption is what is a typical behavior through which we right? so that's that's i mean you can you can completely disagree is my my absolutely personal view in analysis and i'm looking through at the digital library evolution through the year. So let us look at uh, the time uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay was talking about the pre-digital library, the early digital library time, where naturally there was no disruption. Things were just slowly happening, coming in, digital collections coming in only within the network, not on the internet. Uh, just uh, you can have to come to the library, access things which are digital and so on. So some things happening. So but primarily things remain. physical books you had physical spaces journal books and journals uh, operate through issue return mechanism you have cataloging you have referencing uh, reference library and academic libraries public libraries these are pre digital library and subsequently 
very early digital library thing, right? There was no planning required because we were not proactively doing anything. There was no disruption to the things I just mentioned. Then obviously over the next uh, uh, couple of decades, maybe earlier in the West and later in India, but certainly faster in India because in, I mean, anybody who starts uh, running late has to run faster. So we are running much faster than the best way. So that is when, that is what I call the pre-COVID digital library time. Uh, COVID did not happen, but there was, a, there was a distinct approach towards doing digital library, whether it's National Digital Library of India or it is digital library at several academic institutions, academic libraries being digitized, being put on the web and so on. And things started changing from, you know, a lot of digital books coming in, multimedia content coming in, uh, catalog getting replaced by search and browse, uh, issue return getting replaced by access anytime, anywhere, and so on. And, and what happens is on top of that, you know, derivative services start happening. Now that you have this all in digital, you have distance learning, you have online learning, you have MOOCs, you have flipped classroom, you have learning management system, virtual accreditation kind of things coming in. But if you look through that, 20 years in India, they've been doing it. At least 20 years. NPTEL started in 2000. Before that, we had uh, you know, physical forms of electronic uh, dissemination, VHS tapes, then pen drives. Those used to happen in late 90s. So it's more than 20 years that we have been talking about digital learning, digital education, digital library. A lot of planning has gone in, slow, high level of planning, high investment, all of that. And always the focus was non disruption Keep on doing what you are doing and then add something. Add two courses which you can do. In. You, do you are not talking about uh, uh, doing a complete graduation program on digital. You are talking about Add one to course which your university may not be able to, uh, you know, offer, and the university in Delhi is being able to offer. So you take it. So low disruption, high plan. Now you get COVID. Somebody gives you COVID. Black Swan moment, as they say, for education. The institutions get closed. Students back to home. Examinations cancelled. Conferences called off. Everything in a matter of seven days, your whole world has changed. Where did you get time to plan? No time to plan. We didn't plan anything. It was not possible to plan anything. Planning comes down to low, low, very low. Disruption is the highest. Everything that we knew work didn't work anymore. You have to find out a way to survive. There is a surge of use. You innovate. By going on to online classes, online evaluation, online conferences, digital libraries, digital learning comes at the center of it. So you can see that uh, you know, as you go from pre-digital to the pre-COVID digital, you have been planning a lot without disruption, and then you are pushed by COVID into on-COVID digital, which does not allow you to plan, gives you a lot of disruption, but you come up with solutions which are really proving to be effective. And of course, nobody has seen the future. I haven't either, but this is how I perceive if there is a post-COVID or I do not know, maybe it is co-COVID. Uh, we have started about uh, talking about new normal that is COVID. I mean, we'll, we'll not have a time when COVID will not be there, but we'll learn to live with COVID. And, and what we expect in that is certainly the disruption will continue to happen because we have learned that we have to make things significantly different to survive, but the planning will also be high because we are in the time. And we'll have digital libraries for knowledge in action. We'll have access for all democratization. NEP, National Education Policy, is severely talking about rural libraries, broadband, access of K-12, all of these, uh, you know, high level of disruption and... Uh, that needs planning for democratizing through the connectivity, open knowledge, accreditation, open space for interactions, and so on. So probably COVID has taught us a lesson of you know, kind of how to balance right. The of the library itself is changing. Like you, you need, for example, for e-learning, you need to do a quiz on the Moodle side. So I mean, one view could be that could be a part of the library service. 
but you, you need that because without that the e-learning cannot happen so it certainly needs a whole lot of enhanced digital library services for the e-learning to be effective at a scale that's what i'm talking okay sir so the next question is by preet sharma and uh, she is asking that for an educational institution which open source softwares are best for starting a digital library it's a uh, um, uh, we so far uh, at the back uh, we so far use dspace uh, so it depends on the, on the on the requirements that you have uh, in terms of content management it's usually dspace but uh, if you are really you know asking this because you want to uh start one i would suggest that you get in touch with us uh, we have experts who can tell you exactly what you need but there are several open and free solutions available well. okay sir so uh next question is by dhananjay patra and uh, sir is asking that please tell about scholarly publications like sci ssci journals are available in ndli Yes, there are several journals available, but please, uh, Dhananjay, please uh, don't get misled. Uh, as you go to these journals, most of them are not open and free. Most of them are open up to just the abstract because these are most of these SCI journals are publisher content, so therefore they they need to be paid for. So either uh, so there is an ESS uh, body who decides as to which journals are paid for and what universities get your. uh vice chancellor and uh, principal sir would be able to tell you what the journals are in your college subscription beyond that you things cannot be free because these are publisher paid content so most of i mean several of them you will find for example you'll find a whole lot of i triple i do not know which uh, area you are from which uh, discipline you are from but you'll find a significant amount of springer con contents you'll find uh, i triple contents you'll find some elsevier contents you'll find academic press contents uh, but majority of them are priced they are not free okay sir thank you the next question is by shonel show ma'am and uh, she is asking that can we access different libraries through this di uh, digital library system inside the country or outside or abroad it it depends on if if that uh, that uh, other library has allowed us uh, to be integrated so there are several who have allowed us so if you go to the just uh, go to the site and keep uh, trying you, there is a browse by source you'll see an option browse and in that you try by source you'll find all the different libraries who have allowed integration so those you'll be able to uh, for example uh, say iit delhi library iit bombay library i mean these are these are only digital content that are free you do not need that this search is searching the books in that library we are also working on uh, uh, that kind of a system which is you know uh, uh, kind of a physical virtual system that uh, we will you be able to search books in a different library that will come in sometime by the end of this year but as of now all uh, library all search of integrated library art for their digital open and free content and uh, you just go there you'll find several of them in the country as well as several which are from outside it depends on who allows i mean it's, it's a philanthropy learn education is philanthropy education cannot be whoever allows okay sir they are it's Uh, yes. Sir, uh, what kind of materials are available there uh, regarding uh, what area of researches are available there? Means, uh, what kind of research materials are available there? What do you uh, mean by kind? What, what mean kind, kind means? I mean the uh, area of researches. I mean all. Uh, all areas are available. I I I, I mean that 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 was I mean may, maybe whoever asked was not listening to the presentation in the beginning because that's what I said is a is a basic motto it has to be all disciplines. Now of course I mean all disciplines will never get equally represented. But there is engineering, there is uh, science, there is physics, there is chemistry, yes. there is mathematics, there is English, there is uh, Hindi, there is uh, geography, there is uh, Ayurved, there is uh, law, everything. But of course not. Some some have more content, some have less content. Okay, sir. okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, so, uh, may I go to the next question, sir? Yeah, please. 
okay sir so uh, the next question is asked by nurul islam sir and he is asking that a large number of indian journals fail to include in ugc kl list so what is or are the cause or causes that and uh, how to mitigate the problems uh sir uh, this is this is not in the scope of the digital library decision so i do not think i can comment on this particularly UGC KL list is I mean I, I'm not a part of the UGC system because I, I I'm at uh, IIT so I I'm an autonomous uh, institution so I'm not very informed of that either. Uh, if you if you need more information on that you can write to me I can get you directed towards uh, people who deal with this but I'm not a competent person. To okay, sir. The next is a request by Pratima Basu and uh, Ma'am is asking. to show how can we register in ndli and how we can get different materials uh, go there and register that's it i mean in, in in today's time i'm sure nobody here needs to be taught as to how to register to a digital site go to register put in your name and email address and uh, whatever other details you want to you'll get registered in fact you can you can search and access the site even without registration but we advise to register so that you can get better services <coughs> sir any institutional um, uh, any institutional affiliation is required is mandatory or we no, can self register you can you can register yourself okay sir all all that is required is a is to have a valid email address to which a validation code will be sent so okay sir on that code will be validated but i i did mention that i am requesting a uh, kujbihar college to register as an institutional partner so that all of their students and teachers can be registered in one go nobody has to individually go and register and that is a very nice mechanism to itself if you write to us we will uh, deposit someone to work with you and get this done i request principal sir to uh, deposit someone to do that Okay, That sir. is a nice proposal, sir. We'll go from for a point. Sure, sure, sure. Sir, uh, Bhagwan Sri Chatterjee, ma'am, is asking that mainly what are the advantages of this and how we can be benefited from the digital library. Ah, uh, I think ah uh, that is that is what was my first three slides as to when I talked about uh, what does a digital library mean? It's anytime, anywhere. It certainly is a lot more affordable than than anything else. I mean, you can uh, you are not being able to access any physical library now, right? But you can access uh, India, so that's advantage enough. And uh, then obviously it is a lot more cost effective uh, because uh, the content majority of contents can be shared among several people without any additional cost. And finally, it can provide a lot of services which uh, general libraries cannot provide because. it is again brick and mortar is not possible at that scale okay sir so uh, shubhadeep goswami is asking that will we get indian english literature more in future yes of course and uh, if you have uh, references i mean there is there's a lot of english literature in, in the library as i as i understand uh, i'm not a man of english uh, but if you come across uh, any any source i mean not only in english uh, In any age, where where there is open uh, educational content, uh, content which are open and free, just let us know. We will con contact that source and get that integrated. We do that on a regular basis because certainly, certainly, we'll understand that uh, for some of us, it's not impossible to know about what are the good sources in different disciplines. So please uh, let us know. We will do that. But as of now, I'm pretty sure there's a good amount of English literature also available. So the last one is again a request. The uh, Dhananjay Patel sir is requesting you to tell about the software training program and machine learning video program. I mean, there are um, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, you, you primarily look for NPTEL inside that. NPTEL has several such videos on machine learning, on artificial intelligence, on uh, programming in different uh, languages, in different software training like. since i'm from computer science i run three three courses every semester in nptel on uh, software training on c++ on database on object oriented systems and so on so all of these you will be able to find under uh, nptel in swell in in india 
ओके सर दैट्स ऑल सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर बीइंग विद अस थैंक यू सो मच तपन सर ओवर टू यू हां ओवर टू सोनिल सोम प्लीज प्रोसीड हां थैंक यू सर थैंक यू professor patu pratim sir uh, it's very it was very knowledgeable and uh, very much informative to us as i asked you a few questions also and i got my answers <laughs> thank you sir and thank you sir for being with us and uh, for uh, uh, sharing your knowledge and now i would like to request uh, mr tarikul islam uh, post graduation department of english of coach bihar college to uh, present his vote of thanks okay yes hello am i audible sir am i yes, sir, am audible yes 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 you are you are audible sir okay so i am warm and graceful good afternoon to everybody to our most beloved dignitaries and organizing committee worthy teachers and my dear students and everyone gathered on this platform a very warm and graceful good afternoon to you it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of all those who worked really hard to make this webinar a successful one now i on behalf of kuchbihar college and the entire fraternity of the institution first of all express my most sincere thanks to the almighty god for making this today's event a resounding success with his blessings and grace we have been able to make this webinar what it was really on behalf of the organizing committee i also take this opportunity to express my deep sense of gratitude to our chief patron professor devkumar mukherjee honorable vice chancellor kuch bihar panchanan burma university who spared some valuable time for us from his highly busy schedule to grace this occasion i would also like to extend my warm sense of appreciation to our chief guest who dr abdul kader safeli registrar kuch bihar panchanan burma university who unfortunately could not attend this event today but who always unfailingly respond to the invitation of kuch bihar college to grace any occasion with his benign presence now i would also like to express my hearty thanks to our most honorable eminent and distinguished resource person dr patho pratim das who is a joint principal investigator of national digital library of india iit kharagpur and also he teach he is a professor in the department of computer science and engineering iit kharag kharagpur we have been very much blessed by his wonderful thought provoking enlightening enriching engaging speech your thoughts sir have enlightened our minds and shown us a new path really in this covid 19 situation which was almost in every aspect of our life has been thrown out of gear you have shown us how this digital library especially e learning can help us which is very much cost effective and any time anywhere access now i would also like to especially thank our beloved and respected principal sir dr pankaj kumar devnath who has always been instrumental and acted like a catalyst that stimulated us to do our best who always stood among us like pillars of strength and it is he who acted like a linchpin of our college and without his constant support and encouragement inspiration and blessing guardianship such event could not have been would have been completely unthinkable and imaginable and inconceivable thank you sir once again and hope you will go on encouraging and inspiring us in future as well now uh, i would also take this opportunity to thank mr vinay sharma the organizing secretary of this webinar and librarian of our college for his constant involvement and willingness to take on the completion of his task now an event like this can't happen overnight the wheels of such event start rolling weeks ago it requires constant planning and a bards eye for details we have been very much fortunate and up to be backed by such a person who has been extremely proactive dedicated devoted energetic and work a whole especially so there is no guess for prize there is no prize for guessing you can guess who this person is a special credit goes to dr tapan kumar das who is convener of this event and also coordinator pg department of geography who worked day in and day out shouldering the responsibility alone for making this gala webinar a successful one i am really short of words for him and also a special credit to goes goes to 
two principal pillars of our college who always shoulder the responsibility of our college and without whose support i think the building of kuchbihar college will crumble down professor obhijit rai our honorable bursa and honorable gb member and also head of the department of commerce professor obhijit rai and also tcs another pillar is tcs you no know, teachers council secretary professor munimoy chakraborty who are the two pillars of kuchbihar college who like atlas already shoulder the building and like a hercules or they always shoulder the responsibility of all the almost herculean task of our college last but not the least a big thank you to all the stakeholders teachers well wishers participants and students who worked behind the scene and have been involved directly or indirectly with this webinar thank you all for your rock solid support and encouragement to help this webinar to come to come to its fruition thank you so much for participating in this webinar finally i would like to tender my sincerest apology to those who might have been mistakenly missed out of my mention i really beg your forgiveness reminding you the proverb that to err is human no human being is infallible so i am also fallible it is natural for human beings to make mistakes and this mistake on my part i must admit has been completely inadvertent and unwilling so if i miss out willingly or unwillingly somebody's name for mentioning in this webinar who had been directly or indirectly involved for making this success i am really extending my sincere apology to them so i would like to especially thank those whose names i forgot to mention thank you once again and thank you all sir yeah, that's all now over to you sonal madam thank you sir thank you it's a very nice speech of vote of thanks yes sir yes please please you continue sir tapan sir will be missing if we uh, if we need to uh, thanks to tarikul islam who who actually uh, offered us the uh, vote of thanks thank you uh, thank you exactly uh, i was thank trying you. to thank say you, that sir. and it was nice and gesture and nice gesture and nice words from you uh, it really appreciated us and uh, you, so we are at the end at the verge of this uh, webinar now so i would like to request professor um, uh, dr tapan kumar das to wind up the session over here and uh, my sincere gratitude and thanks to all the dignitaries especially dr uh, pratim das and uh, all all the participants i pay my uh, regards and uh, best wishes to you and uh, now i'm waiting for the next venture to come and let us meet us there let's meet there so thank you from me and i would request uh, professor uh, dr Tap uh, tapan kumar das to wind up the session over here thank you thank you very much thank you so much thank you very much thank thank you it was excellent take care stay safe thank you bye <laughs>